it's VTR Dave and welcome back to the channel. I'm quite excited about this restoration. One, we've got a vintage Star Wars vehicle and two, it's in a bit of a state so it's something to dig into. Now, this is the Imperial Troop Transport released in 1979. I don't think this vehicle actually appeared in the original films. This is more an invention of Kenner. There's a rather strange vehicle. It's an Imperial hovercraft of sorts. Not really designed for luxurious travel. I think the drivers have the best deal. They can sit down at least. But in economy class, well, you've got to stand up in these pods on the side. We're departing now. Get on board. Yes, sir. How the f*** do you get into one of these pods? You're nearly there. Just hop. <coughs> this. Where's the do-back? I f***ing hate modern technology. You dumbass. And here at the back, in droid class, well, you're sat right next to the noisy engine and you're shut in the dark. I guess if you're a droid, at least you can switch yourself off. Let's dive into the issue, shall we? The first glaringly obvious one is that over the years, the plastic has discolored pretty badly. In fact, we've got these horrible brown lines that you sometimes see on these vehicles. Those tend to be quite stubborn and hard to remove. This door demonstrates just how bad things are. We've got the kind of usual gray that we expect on the top there, but the rest of this is just a yucky brown. So we are going to retro bright this thing. And that means the return of RoboSun. Oh yes. The keen eyed amongst you will have noticed that there are several items missing from this troop transport, including the notorious battery cover. So I'm sourcing all of those. Generally this thing needs a damn good clean and there are a few things that are slightly broken. The guns are bent, a common problem. The wheels underneath are very stiff, so hopefully I can fix those as well. But the main feature of this troop transport are its sound effects. I haven't yet tested the sound effects, so I have no idea if they actually work. Looking at the terminals, well, they look a little crunchy. So regardless, they're going to need a good clean. Will it work? There's only one way to find out. I think the answer is no, it's completely dead. Another job for the list. This troop transporter is a pile of sh Take it to the junkyard. Junkyard, not again. R2, get me out of here. Sir, all is not lost. There are stories of one hiding in the mountains who has the power to fix things. Old Dave, they call him. Find him. Let's crack on. Now there are three screws at the top and one underneath. I think it's the one underneath that's important to open this up. But before I do that, I want to remove all the side pods and the doors so we don't damage them. To remove these pods, push them from underneath, which will unclip like so, and then you can just swing it open to reveal the top. And that way we don't break those brittle tabs. hinges on these doors are also very brittle so I've applied some heat and then with the door wide open I'm just going to pull it like so and off it comes.
We now have a dismantled troop transporter. I've made a wiring diagram for the record player. If you have a look on the back of the troop transport, there's a switch. And this switch basically controls whether you have fast or slow sound effects. No idea why they put that feature in, but it does complicate things a little bit. I will come back to the record player later. In the meantime, I want to focus on discoloring this plastic. Now I have one piece here, the door, which is in very good shape. It's this nice gray. If I compare, well, we can see a world of difference there. So first thing I'm going to do is clean all these pieces, get rid of all the grime and dirt and all the sticker residue, and then we can prepare for retro writing. I'm aiming for an even coat and once I'm happy, I'm just gonna place into the bag. This is what I'm looking for. All the pieces are now nicely covered in cream peroxide, spaced out in the bag. We're ready to take them over to the RoboSun. Welcome to the crazy machine known as RoboSun. I've done a previous video on this, so if you want to know all the details, there's a link in the description. Basically, we've got a bowl of water that's kept at a constant temperature. Above that is a UV light suspended from this workbench. Basically, we're replicating the heat and the light of the sun. It's the Star Wars Imperial Troop Transporter that you put together. Batteries not included. Stormtrooper sold separately. What's that? It's my troop transporter. It makes five more sounds, too. Are you dead? Where are you? There's the laser cannon, stun gun, and stormtrooper. Did he say that? Oh, Dad. Star Wars Imperial Troop Transporter. Stormtrooper sold separately. New from Kenner. I've retrieved the first bag from RoboSun. You may be wondering why do I even use a bag? Well, one, it stops the cream peroxide from drying out. And two, I can place these pieces in warm water. And I think that does make a difference whilst the light is hitting them. And if I look closely, after about six hours, it does seem to have made a difference. So let's get these pieces out of the bag and we can have a closer look after cleaning them off. Right, let's take a look at these pieces. Oh yeah, I'm pleased with that. This was all discolored on the top here. That's all gone. Very nice. Let's take a look at one of these pods. Look at that. That is a nice gray color. Even on these edges where it discolored badly, that's all gone. Very nice. Now let's look at this really tough door. That's a massive improvement. You can just about still see the original gray, but that horrible brown that was there before, definitely better. In fact, let's just compare it to our control door. Not bad, it's almost there. So I think what I'm going to do is put this in for another treatment along with the main body of the troop transport. <laughs> After several hours of RoboSun, this certainly looks promising. Let's get this out of the bag and clean her up. Wow, can't believe the result. 
all that discoloring is gone. We're back to the original gray, even those stubborn lines on the top and on the edges, they're back to gray as well. I'm really happy with this technique. Let's just uh, compare it to the pod. Yep, that's the same gray. Oh, this is gonna look so good once it's put back together. What about that stubborn door? We can still see there's some browning on there, but actually if I compare the color of those plastics, that door is definitely a darker gray to the rest of the body. In fact, I'm just gonna compare this door to the control door that we've got. Yeah, they're definitely different colors. And in fact, I noticed just a while ago that this door's got a ridge on it and this one doesn't. I don't think this is a reproduction. I just think this is from a different revision of the troop transport. So I'm gonna see if I can find another one of these doors so that we've got matching plastic across all of the body. In the meantime, I'm gonna put this back into RoboSun because I wanna see if it can remove this really stubborn discoloring. And while it's doing that, I can move on to the next stage. I'm really looking forward to cracking this open. If you've seen my Knight Rider restoration video, link in the description below, you'll have seen that I opened the record player inside a kit and restored that. It's made by the same company, Ozen, so I'm expecting a lot of the mechanics to be the same, but I'm really intrigued by how they managed to assign a sound to each of these buttons. Tune in to part two where I'll dismantle this record player, deep dive into how it all works, and give it a full service. And hopefully this will be back to where I can condition again. VTR, you f***ing tease. Thank you for staying till the end. Reward yourself with another VTR classic. Or just leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Until next time, stay safe and cheers.